Hi everyone, in this video we are going to discuss this problem called number of great partitions and the problem says that we will be given with an array of n integers and we will be also given with an uh, integer k and we have to divide this array into two groups such that each element belongs to one of the groups and sum of both the groups should be greater than or equals to k that will be called a great partition and we have to find out in how many different ways we can have this great partition. So let's take an example and try to understand the problem statement. So let's say we are given with this particular array and the value of k is 4. So what we have to do is we have to divide these four elements in two groups such that both the groups have value greater than or equals to k. So we have to find out how many ways in how many ways we can do that. So let us uh, say that uh, if you want a sum of 4 then we can uh, pick these three elements in one group and this element in the second group. So what we can have is we can put 1, 2 and 3 together and we can put 4 in the second group. Now both the groups have a sum greater than or equals to 4. And second way could be that we can pick 1 and 3 together and 2 and 4 together. So 1 and 3 together have a sum of 4 and 2, or 4, 2 and 4 together have a sum of 6. So this is one of the ways. Now what we can do is we can pick 1 comma 4 and in this way we will have uh, uh, like we can put, uh, pick 1 and 4 and then in the second group we will have 2 and 3. Okay, now this is also one of the ways in which we can have a sum in both the groups greater than or equals to k. Now what we can do is we can just reverse uh, the reverse the groups. So this is g1, this is g2. Okay, now we can put 2, 3 in g1. So if we put uh, 2, 3 in g group 1, then 1, 4 will go in group 2. And now these two are two different ways to partition this array. Alright, okay, now we can uh, put 2, 4. 2, 4 in group 1, then we can have 1, 3 in group 2. Similarly, we can put 4 in group 1 and we can put 1, 2 and 3 in group 2. So these are the 6 ways in which we can uh, divide this array into 2 groups such that the sum of both the groups is greater than or equals to 4, right? So this is what problem statement says. So now let us uh, try to see how we can approach this problem. So we can say that for uh, every element we have two options either we can put this particular element in the group 1 or we can put in the group 2 and based on this we can come up with a recursive relation. So in that recursive relation we have this group 1 and group 2 and we are actually not interested in the elements that we are picking we are interested in the sum of these elements that we are picking. So let's call sum 1 and sum 2 okay. So what we can do is we can have a recursive relation in which we can have three variables sum1, sum2 and index. So this i will represent that for which uh, element we have to take a decision and sum1 will represent the sum that we have uh, taken so far for group 1 and sum2 will represent the sum that we have taken so far for group 2. Okay. Now for ith element we have two options either to put that ith element in group 1 or in group 2. So if we put ith element in group 1 then uh, we will have we will make a recursive call of uh, we will increase the index and then in sum 1 we will have to increment nums of i all right and uh, sum 2 will remain as it is okay this is one of the recursive calls in which we are putting ith element in the group 1 and the second recursive call would be uh, sum 1 will remain as it is and we will add sum 2 or like uh, nums of i in sum 2 so nums of i in sum 2 okay these are the two recursive uh, calls that we will have if we are uh, uh, saying that we will put ith element in the group 1 or group 2 okay now we can uh, write the whole logic and whatever the number of ways that it will return and it will return we can add and return right so based on this we can have a recursive relation but the problem with this recursive code or recursive relation is that we have three variables and based on these three variables the number of states will be really huge and we will not be able to allocate uh, that much memory that we can store all the recursive or distinct recursive states that we will have in this recursive uh, solution okay so either we can try to reduce the number of states or we can try to like think of something else so let us first try to reduce the number of states in this problem okay now can we observe one thing uh, can we say that if we have fixed some number of elements for uh, let's say group one then the elements that will go in the group two are already defined like if we have picked one two and three uh, for group one then for sure four will have to go in group two similarly if we have said that one and three will go in group one then automatically two and four will go in the group two so can we say that if we are able to come up with these subsets right if we are able to come up with these subsets then automatically we will be able to come up with these subsets right and we are actually not interested in these elements but in the sum so if we are able to come up with this sum uh, 3 plus 2 1 uh, 6 
then 4, then 5, then 5, then 6 and then 4. So if you are able to come up with this, uh, these sums, can we come up with uh, the sum of these uh, subsets? So if the total sum is, what is the total sum? Uh, here the total sum is 6 plus 4, uh, 10, right? 10 is the total sum. So if the sum of this particular set is 6, then for sure the uh, sum of this particular set will be 4. If the sum of this set is 4, then for sure it will be 6. Uh, it will be 5, it will be 5, and it will be 4, and it will be 6, right? So if we are able to come up with all the sums that we can have for group 1, then for sure we, we can find out the sum of the uh, group 2 that will be corresponding to it, okay? So based on this, uh, can we say that we can remove one of these two states? We can say that now we can have a function in which we can have an index and we can have just the sum of first set or we can say first group. Now we for every element we have two options either to put the ith element in this group 1 or do not put in the group 1. If we are not putting that element in group 1 then it will automatically go in the group 2. All right. Now uh, if we make the recursive calls the recursive calls will look something like this. Uh, like I we will increase right and the first option is to include the ith element uh, in this uh, in this group 1. So if we are including the ith element in group 1 then we will increment the sum uh, and it will be nums of i. All right. So this will be a recursive call where we are including the uh, ith element in group 1. Now if we are excluding it, if we are uh, not including ith element in group 1, then nums of 1 will remain same as it is and uh, 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 that means it will automatically be included in group 2. Right. Now we can have uh, if condition or base case here something like uh, i greater than equals to the size. Now here what we can do is we can store the total sum of the array uh, in some variable and to find out the sum 2 we already have the sum 1 we already have this sum 1 right sum of uh, group 1 and to find out the sum of group 2 we can use this equation like sum of these two should be equals to the total sum all right so if we have this sum and if we have total sum we can find out this sum 2 okay so sum 2 will be equals to total minus uh, sum 1 Right. So now we have sum 1 also and sum 2 also. Now we can check uh, if both are greater than equal to k or not and based on that we can return 0 or 1. Okay. Alright. So we are able to reduce the uh, number of states but still uh, the distinct values or the maximum value for sum 1 can be 10 power is to 9 into 10 power is to 3 which is uh, 10 power is to 12 and uh, the different values of i can be n. Like we can have n different values of i. So the total number of states that we can have uh, will be equals to n into 10 power is to 12 and n can be 10 power is to 3. That means 10 power is to 12 into 10 power is to 3. We can have 10 power is to 15 uh, different states, right? And we will not be able to store all of them because that much memory we can't allocate. Now, uh, now we can say that uh, this way will not work for us. Okay. So we'll have to think of something else, something else. Okay. So let's uh, see a few of the things. So can we say that, uh, can we try to count how many different ways we have in which we can divide all these elements into two groups. So for this first element we have two options, either we can put it in group 1 or in group 2. Same two options we have for second element, same two options we have third uh, for third element and same two options we have for the fourth element. So can we say in total we will have two power is to n different ways in which we can put elements in the two groups, okay. Alright, so we will have these many ways, okay. Uh, now let us talk about some of the cases that we can have with these uh, both the sums. So we know that sum 1 plus sum 2 is equal to total. So first case could be that uh, sum 1 is greater than or equal to k and sum 2 is also greater than or equal to k. And we were actually trying to find out the, uh, the ways in which this condition is true uh, using these uh, recursive calls, right? Second possibility is that uh, sum 1 is smaller than k and sum 2 is greater than or equal to k. This is also a possibility, right? Third case is uh, in which sum 1 is smaller than k and sorry sum 1 is greater than or equals to k and sum 2 is smaller than k and the fourth possibility is uh, when both the sums are smaller than k right sum 2 is also smaller than k these are the four possibilities okay all right uh, so if we have this case can we say that we will never be able to get away such that both the partitions have greater than or equals to k value because if we want two partitions such that both the partitions have uh, values or sum greater than or equals to k, in that case, can we say that the total sum should be greater than or equals to 2 into k? And if this condition is true, that means sum is not greater than or equals to k. Why? Because if we just add these two values, sum 1 plus sum 2, then can we say that this will be smaller than 2 into k? 
because this is smaller than k this is also smaller than k so in total we can say that uh, this whole expression will be smaller than 2 into k and this thing is nothing but total sum so we can say that total sum is smaller than 2 into k so if this condition is true that means we can only have zero ways to partition our uh, array like we will not be able to partition our array into two parts such that both the parts have value greater than or equals to k right so we will uh, we can have a if check uh, in our code uh, so that we do not encounter this particular case now let us talk about these three cases we know that uh, in total we will have two powers to n ways to divide uh, array into two groups right so let's say we have x ways uh, in which this condition will be followed we have y number of ways in which this condition will be followed and let's say we have z number of ways in which uh, this particular condition is uh, satisfied so we can say that x plus y plus z will be equal to 2 power is 2 and for short right okay can you now can you guys uh, observe some uh, relation between x and z can we observe something uh, so let's take uh, one example let's say we put 1 comma 2 in group 1 and uh, automatically group 2 will have 3 and 4 right so for k is equal to 4 this group 1 is having a sum which is smaller than k and group 2 is having a sum which is greater than equals to k that means this condition is followed this condition second condition is followed now if we just swap the elements in both the groups if we have 3 comma 4 here and we can have 1 comma 2 here so in this case can we say that the third condition is followed so can we say that uh, the number of ways in which this condition will be followed in the same number of ways this condition will be followed why because if we have y number of ways in which this condition is followed then we can just swap the uh, elements present in both the groups and we can have this condition so can we say that here uh, y is equals to equals to z y is equals to equals to z in this particular uh, uh, in this particular scenario so now we can say that x plus 2 into y is equals to 2 power is to n right and we are only interested in the ways in which this condition is true that means we want to find out the value of x all right so so far we were trying to find out the value of x using these recursive calls but the only problem is that this value or the value of the sum is becoming 10 like can have a value of 10 power to 12 which is creating a problem of the number of states we can't store these many number of states all right so the other option is that uh, we know we can find out this uh, value 2 power is 2 n very easily right so the other option is that we can try to find out the value of this particular y and then using these two values we can find out the value of x so what is this y this y is a case in which one of the sets have a value smaller than k or we can say that set 1 is having a value smaller than k so if we find out these y number of ways then we can easily find out the value of x so our new definition or the new problem that we have we are we have to solve is we have to find out the different number of ways in which set one can have a sum smaller than k right this is what we have to find out so let's try to write a recursive code for this particular uh, new problem new uh, definition okay now let's try to write a recursive code uh, and we in that recursive code we have we want to find out the distinct number of, or different number of ways in which we can have a sum for group 1 smaller than k right so again for every element we have two options either to take that uh, ith element in the group 1 or do not take it so we can have again a definition of a function with uh, which contains i and a sum let's say s1 right let's say s1 okay now for ith element we have two options either to include the ith element in set 1 or do not include it right so if we include if we include the ith element in set 1 then s1 will be incremented right nums of i and if we do not include then the recursive call would be sorry i plus 1 right i plus 1 and s1 will remain as it is okay these are the two recursive calls for inclusion and exclusion okay now what we want we want to find out the different number of ways such that sum of set 1 is smaller than k right that means if at any point of time s1 becomes greater than or equals to k in that case we do not uh, have we have zero number of ways right so we will return zero okay and if this condition is not true and i becomes greater than or equals to n that means we have taken decision for all the elements and still the sum for set one is smaller than k so if i becomes greater than or equals to or we can simply take just equal to n in that case we got one way in which the sum of set one is smaller than k so in that case return one okay so and uh, for this generic case we will just return the sum of these two all right we will also have to take modulo and all i hope you guys can take that 
So our uh, recursive code would look something like this, right? And we can now very easily memoize this uh, recursive code. Uh, so what we can do is we can uh, we can have a DP array. So okay, well, what what should be the dimension of our uh, DP array? So can we say that the distinct value or the maximum value this S1 can have now is smaller than or equal to 10 power to 3 or we can say 1000. S1 will always have a value smaller than uh, 1000. So distinct values that we can have for S1 is 1000 and the distinct values of i can be n, right? So in that case, can we say that the in total, uh, how many states we will have? We will have n into 10 power to 3 and what is the maximum value of n? n can also be 10 power to 3. So in total, we can have 10, uh, we will have 10 power to 6 different, distinct states, okay? So what we can do is we can try to have a, a vector of vector in which we will store our results, right? Because uh, for this, we will have overlapping sub problems, right? So we can have a vector of vector and let's call it dp. And what, what will be the dimensions of this? The dimensions of this will be n and the inner vector will have a dimension of, uh, let's take it as one th 10 power to 3, okay? All right. So this will be our uh, dp array. Now what we have to do is we will pass a dp in this function and before before making these two function calls, we will have a if check. And we will have initial value as minus one. Okay. So if dp of uh, i, dp of i, s1, if this thing is not equals to minus one, that means we have already calculated our answer. And in that case, we can return, simply return dp of i, s1. Okay. If we have not calculated the answer for this particular state, then what we will do, we will make these function calls and before returning, we will store them. We will store them in the dp uh, vector of vectors. So S1. Okay. So we will store this and then we will return it. Okay. This will be the uh, code. Uh, it is not looking very good, but uh, this will work. Okay. Now what we can try to do is we can also try to write it in uh, uh, like iterative manner or top down, but uh, that's fine, right? You guys can try to write it. And if you face any difficulty while uh, writing this in uh, iterative manner, then you can comment your code and your doubts and we will be more than happy to answer those. So I think that's uh, all for this video. Okay, no, uh, we also have to talk about uh, time and space complexity. So what will be the time and space complexity? So can we say that uh, we are just making two function calls which will take constant amount of time, right? And for how many times we will do this work? How many times we will do this work? So how many distinct states we have? The total number of distinct ways, uh, distinct, uh, uh, distinct, Total number of distinct states that we can have is n into k, right? n into k. Uh, uh, I've taken 1000 because 1000 is the maximum value of k, okay? So these many states we have and for these many states, we will make order of, we will uh, do order of one work by making these two calls. So can we say that the total number of operations that will be done uh, over all the recursive calls will be n into k? Because for these many states, we are doing constant amount of work. So time complexity will be order of n into k and space complexity will also be n into k all right and instead of uh, this 10 power to 3 we can uh, also take k right that will save some of the space so time and space complexity both will be n into k okay okay all right uh, now once we have once we have the total number of ways in which we uh, set one can have a value smaller than k uh, and we will we will call this function and let's say we will store the result in this particular y so we'll call this particular function starting from zero and the sum will also be zero initially right and uh, we will we are assuming that k and dp and everything will be global or we will pass it by reference so once we have this value of y then we can also we can easily find out this value of x so our answer will be nothing but 2 power is to n minus 2 into y okay so we were interested in x and we have calculated y and we can also calculate this thing so we can uh, return 2 power is to n minus 2 into y right this will be the final answer so I think that's uh, all for this video and I'll meet you in the next one.